what do I do with this anxiety? Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Corey Probst. Welcome back to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. I'm your host and your resident health psychologist. I partner with my clients to explore their lives free from binge eating, free from body shame, and free from food fear. And in this podcast, we explore the many aspects of life related to authentic health and happiness and well being. We dive into topics such as self awareness, emotional resilience, mindset, fitness, disordered eating, motivation, and the relationships that we have with food and our bodies. And in this episode, I am back in conversation with Roseanne Piper. Hi, Corey. Roseanne is licensed diet doc, nutrition clinician, and mindset and motivation coach. And she's in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. And she specializes in the art of connection and fostering collaboration to help guide her clients towards their, their, their chosen health and fitness goals. Roseanne, thanks again for being here with me. Thank you for having me, Corey. I'm looking yeah. so forward to this episode as we explore our topic of navigating emotions. Right. And what do you do with emotions? Yeah. So this, guys, for you who are listening, this is part two of our four-part series on navigating emotions. And today we're specifically talking about what do I do with this emotion? You, you name it, fill in the blank, whether it's anxiety, anger, disappointment, shame, discouragement, all of the ones that you might label as unpleasant. So before we hopped on, Roseanne was sharing with me this experience that she had with her partner. Um, and it specifically relates to something that we had landed on in the previous episode. And Roseanne, we had been discussing like the phrase, this belongs. And mm -hmm. specifically when we're discussing what do we do with emotion, especially the emotions that we feel almost compelled in many ways to push away or avoid or distract from or run from, or shove away, or act like they don't exist, um, we, we more skillfully need to have something that we can do with them, or a way of being with them that promotes more of an, okay, this is here, <laughs> promotes this acknowledgement that there has been a shift in energy and you had said that one of your key takeaways was the phrase this belongs and so I'm wondering if you could share with us how you use that when that comes in and maybe tell us your tell us the story that you were sharing with me and we can see how that kind of fell into place for you yeah well I really appreciate the phrase, this belongs, when we are experiencing all the emotions, because we're never always just happy and joyous and all those little emotions that go along with that. We, we also experience those not so pleasant emotions and, you know, anger and frustration and all of those anxiousness, shame, all of those. And so when we can notice that we have a an emotion that is very much present because I'm not feeling very joyous. <laughs> <laughs> is that maybe what first comes up for you? Like, oh, I don't feel good. This, yes. I don't like this. Is that maybe your cue sometimes? Exactly. I okay. noticed that shift in energy. It could be something that's happened, an event, something that's said, and there's a shift in energy. So, you know, I, it's noticing it and then giving it a place like, you know, this, this belongs, it's softer, it's more gentle. And when I look at it that way and, and just come to it that way, I'm able to be with it a little bit more and, and figure out what I want to do with it. And so, 
so yeah so whether i'm feeling anxious or it's angry or regretful or anything it's like this belongs and that's okay it's okay that you're here mm -hmm. now what am i going to do with you there's something very welcoming about that which is counterintuitive because when something feels feels threatening or feels uncomfortable what our automatic reaction really is to like want to get away from it and yet we know that if we are trying really hard to push something away and run away from an emotion typically it's going to come back to bite us it's going to come at us even harder it festers um, yeah. so this belongs is very much a welcoming or an inviting like okay you can be here no i don't have to like you yes this is uncomfortable and like in the grand scheme of all the emotions that i'm going to experience in my life like this one belongs to um it's no less important than the ones that are feel good pleasant emotions this belongs as well mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. where would we be without all of the emotions you know where would we be roseanne <laughs> you know i think that when we're experiencing those unpleasant ones, it, we are able to learn from them and ask questions and help us figure things out. So, you know, I, I think that that is super important. So how do we know that we're experiencing anxiety? So I, you know, I've asked myself this and when it's present, there's certain things that I do, you know, I, I've noticed that my thoughts are really scattered. They're, I will, I'll do, I'll pace, I'll do different things. I, I will <laughs> keep myself really busy. And like, there's just certain things that I do. And however, when I notice anxiety and break it down into those key actions or those behaviors that come up, that's when I can, I can actually be present with them and by noticing them, knowing what I'm doing, I'm like, okay, this is an experience of anxiety. And then yeah. that's when I can maybe change my behavior or whatever I'm doing. So I asked my husband recently, babe, how do you know when I'm feeling anxious? Yeah, can and I pause you right there yeah, for a second, yeah. Roseanne? So I just want to go back to something that you said previously that I mean, was really, really very insightful. Part of being able to be with this emotion is having some level of, or skillfulness in being able to observe what's happening. And with my clients, what I will often do is I will have them acknowledge it by saying, oh, this is an experience of anxiety, for example, versus I am feeling anxious. It's very different. It's like now we've created a little bit of space and it's like we can kind of stand on the outside and watch and observe what the behaviors are and what the different sorts of thought patterns are um, to get an, acquainted with what the signs are. And those are outward manifestations, the things that other people might be able to see, like you said, the pacing. <laughs> or the swinging of the leg that I see a lot of people do when they're anxious, or the tapping of the feet, um, or the furrowing of the brow when there's anxiety present, versus the symptoms, which are what occurs on the inside. These are the internal manifestations. So for you, like you mentioned, it was very much jumbled thoughts, really having a difficult time getting some clarity around what you're thinking in that moment. Um, no one else can see that unless you talk and you're having a hard time verbalizing, right? Exactly. That's outward, but inside, that's all something that you're, that you're observing. Um, so, okay, let's come back to your story. I want everyone yeah. to hear yeah, that, That's yeah. super important stuff. Like this is an experience of anxiety and then yeah. noticing the symptoms of the outward things, the things that are happening inward. So when I asked my husband, babe, how do you know that I'm feeling anxious? Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I love about this. So those of you who are listening and watching, 
I often will will ask our clients to do this. So as they're becoming more acquainted with their own signs and symptoms, we have them ask someone that they trust and someone that they they feel um, you know a sense of collaboration with and they feel comfortable around. We'll have them ask their partners or a trusted friend, how do you know when <laughs> I'm anxious or when I'm sad or when I'm angry or when I'm hurt? Um, and like Rose just said, it can be quite enlightening <laughs> and insightful. Yeah, and we don't, know, we, we don't know everything true. that we do or say, right? <laughs> it's so true. We don't know unless we ask for that honest feedback. So yeah. he, the first thing he said, well, you get that look. And <laughs> the, what's the look? I just can't wait for him to tell me because I'm really curious. And he's like, just that look. Like, I can't really describe it, but your face changes. So we just mm -hmm. left it at that because he couldn't really describe anything that I'm specifically doing. Mm -hmm. uh, however, later, he's like, your lips change, like when we discussed it later. Uh, then, then the second one, I wasn't really prepared for, so I, you know, didn't know to brace myself. <laughs> However, he's like, and you start picking on me. <laughs> and okay. I'm, like, oh, you. I'm like, so tell me about that, because I'm curious. And uh, he, he said that, that usually when I'm feeling anxious, I'm, he's like, he started kind of bossing me around and want, pointing out all the things, that, all the little chores that I haven't done. And oh. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm wanting this control. So now I'm wanting to him to have all this control and everything all to, all to be lined up. So this is actually really interesting. And what great feedback. Cause if I, mm. if he hadn't told me that, how how would I know to that it's probably not something I want to do you know yeah, it's probably yeah. to do often and so then he told me you know he's like and you pace and he mm -hmm. goes you will pace and he goes and you rush around you you rush around cleaning everything <laughs> you do you know from one one activity to the other and then the one that I found awesome that I found just very loving and kind when mm -hmm. he's like, the what the last one was, he said, and you call me. And I'm like, like, call your name? And, I, and he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please clarify. <laughs> he said, you pick up the phone and you, you give me a call. Like if I'm not around, you call me. And I said, do you think I do that just to hear your voice? And he goes, yeah. I think so. And I'm like, that's probably because I'm just needing to be grounded. I'm just wanting to feel safe. And You're not calling him to say, hey, babe, why isn't the trash taken out? And why right. isn't the kitchen floor cleaned? And why'd you leave the crumbs on the counter? Yeah, so it was nice because I knew I'm like, okay, so I'm not always bossing around. <laughs> no, I love this, Roseanne. Thank you. For, from so many different perspectives you learn something about yourself that you did not know before by asking him. So now you've learned some of the different ways in which you show anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. And you also learn about like how that anxiety affects you in relationship. So with someone that you love and with someone that you're close to, it's like, how does that come out and affect me in relationship? with this person. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to add is that I love the fact that he felt safe enough with you to say, oh, I, I know, I know something else that you do. You pick on me. <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't respond with like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? Like there was no, there was no defensiveness. There was, oh, there was curiosity there. There was like, tell me more. I want to understand this. And that's just such a beautiful example of, you know, this collaborative tone, trust, safety in a relationship. And, you know, when, when, cause we asked our participants in the mental edge Academy to do this with someone and I haven't gotten any feedback yet, but one of the things that I had mentioned that you and I had chatted about was be prepared to hear something that maybe you don't expect, maybe you don't like, 
maybe that is not very becoming of your personality or behavior. Um, and I think that happened for you. <laughs> it definitely did. And it happened right away. So when he came out with that and told me I was picking on, I, I just go into that, the picking on him stage. <laughs> I, I actually, I burst out laughing and I'm like, Corey said I might not, I, I should brace myself for this feedback. And we both had a chuckle and we were able to go on. Something I want to point out is that mm -hmm. whole experience, like all of this uh, is just really a great way to allow ourselves to be present, mm -hmm. that non-judgmental awareness mm -hmm. and that we can just be with our emotions and meet them where they're at instead of being blamey and shamey and all those sort of things. And Oh, Roseanne, that's such a great point. And I think that's a just a really perfect place to end this in that when we allow some space to ask the question, like, how do I know when I'm experiencing anxiety, when I'm experiencing anger, frustration, shame, whatever it is that is unpleasant and uncomfortable, um, and we can do and and we do it in a gentle, tender self-compassionate way, it takes on a whole different tone. Because we tend to move into the judgment around feeling negatively, that's, that's kind of normal for most of us. Deliberately taking a self-compassionate, non-judgmental stance around those emotions in particular is so incredibly helpful. And it won't just help us to be to learn how to manage them more uh, more effectively and more skillfully, but it can just like you've described, really change the dynamic within our relationships as well. Yeah, and so important. It it just makes everything a little softer and easier. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining in today, Corey. I always yeah. learn so much from you whenever we're just hanging out as friends or doing stuff like this. It's so great. Where can people find you, Corey? Like yeah. you, you're, you're a therapist. You do great work. Thank you. Thank you, Roseanne. Yeah. Uh, so I have an open email policy. Anyone can email me at any time. It's Corey, K-O-R-I at the diet doc.com. You can find me on Instagram. My handle is at the diet doc life. If you go to the website, it's thedietdoc.com. You can see all of the different programs that I offer. You know, I facilitate the Mental Edge and Eating Psychology program. Those are one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching packages that I offer. I also have online classes. Um, right now, actually, um, I'm facilitating a 30-day Rock Your Body Revolution Challenge with Elizabeth Bouillard, uh, who is also a licensed diet doc clinician and we're diving into intuitive eating for 30 days and really kind of dismantling our relationships with food and body for some discovery and exploration. If you're interested in that, please go to the diet.com slash rock your body to mm -hmm. number two. Roseanne, yeah. please share. Where can people find you? Where, where are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say I did the 10 day rock your body revolution challenge and I've been practicing intuitive eating as well since January and I've really enjoyed it. And it's, it's like, I love knowing that I'm kind of doing, I'm on, right on track. And this is, it, it, I've learned a lot as well. So thank, thank you, you for you and Beth doing that. Yeah. Uh, where can people find me? I, I again, have an open door policy on emails. So it's Roseanne at the diet doc dot com or my website is the diet doc red deer dot com. I also have a Facebook page, the diet doc red deer. So Beautiful. that is where people can find me. All right. Well, thank you, Roseanne. Thank you, everybody for listening. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Diet Doc Life Mastery podcast, please do. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please leave us a review. This is how people find us and benefit from our content. And I would be interested. What's the most common emotion you experience and how do you know you're experiencing it? And then if you're willing, ask someone who you trust and who is close to you. 
how do you know when <laughs> I'm fill in the blank? Would love to hear your comments and feedback. Thanks, guys. Thank you.